Happy New Year, everybody. Starting out the year here doing something that everybody asks me about doing. Uh, switching your bench seat car to a bucket seat car. So I'm going to make this little video showing you kind of step by step of how it's done. The first thing you're going to need to do is order this bracket kit. I will post Kevin's information um, in my post on this video. You're basically going to get four of these. Uh, if you want, you can also get the center console kit. This car was a bench seat car, just a standard, regular car, nothing special. So we're going to put these bucket seats in here. Step number one is take your seat, flip it over. There's going to be four half-inch bolts on the bottom. This will remove this actual um, swivel mounting point. Uh, the next thing you'll need to do is take the four screws out of the trim and get that off, set it aside. When you get this kit, you'll get some pictures and stuff how to do this. You are going to need a MIG welder to get this done. Uh, there's no way around that. So basically, you use your existing hole for your front mounting point where your bench seat would have mounted. Okay, And then you set everything up, and you get them all lined up in the middle of the holes. Get them all set up so they're ready to go. And then mark your spots. Now, your original seat belt mount is not going to work for your swivel bucket seat belts. It looks like it'll work, but once you put the cover on the top, there does not allow enough room for everything to fit, see? So you're gonna have to take that and move it back just a bit. Not too far, but this seat is set back all the way as far back as it can possibly go on the tracks. So that's pretty much where it's gonna set. So this seat belt will probably be sell safe right in this location which I'm going to mark here with a grease pen. So, we can pull this back off, kind of see your setting points, and get everything marked. We'll just mark on the floor with a grease pen across the front of this bracket, and get it set so it's straight. Do the same thing on the back and the front, and then we'll grind a little bit and uh, get it welded. So, let me get that done here quick, and I'll be right back. All right, using my little Hobart grease pen, I marked out the locations of everything. This one actually wants to sit right inside this little divot pocket, which is a uh, part of the floor. So not the end of the world. I'll end up doing a bead weld across the back and then the front, and then I'll start bringing everything up uh, to match that so it's not so um, contoured in there, so it's more flat. So we'll just adjust the floor, not the end of the world. Top one's pretty easy, super simple, and then we don't have to do anything with that guy there. So we should be ready to weld. I'll get this all prepped. Um, we need to prep the bracket and we need to prep the floor in that area and then we'll recoat everything with POR once we're done just to make sure that it's all nice and good to go. So there is one location right there underneath that bracket that will need to be welded shut. Um, not the end of the world. We'll get that as well. So that should be good and then we'll uh, move this seat belt hole uh, for the seat belt bolt. We'll move it back three inches roughly uh, I want the seat set in there first so we know exactly where they need to be and then we can kind of play with that so we'll be right back all right we are ready to go you can see what I did is I took my little fine tip sharpie after I ground everything marked at least two points on each side just a little L shape just so we know where everything's gonna go and make sure that everything's gonna fit in there nice and snug now we can weld right over those sharpie marks it's not gonna hurt uh, you're going to find seam sealer down across this line on the inside of the floor. I redid this um, ever so slightly when we did the floor coatings. So you'll see that stuff kind of marked everything out. You can see my marks just barely there. But there's a lot of play with this front bracket. So um, I've got a Miller welder over there. It's a MIG welder. It's got 7525 argon, argon carbon dioxide mix. Um, it's not an entry level welder. It's probably a little bit higher up than that. Um, I started out with a little Hobart. It was four or 500 bucks, worked great, but you do need a gas welder. You're not gonna be able to flux weld this. Um, in fact, I'll make a video about welding in general um, a little later. So general rule of thumb is keep your ground as close to the weld zone as possible because it's kind of a pain in the butt. I just, uh, I use this quite a bit, this little ground strap here. This thing will cooperate. Struggle bus today. So clean that little spot. That's the little spot that, that holds in your uh, lower armrest for the rear. 
So I'm gonna run a couple beads here, get everything ready to go, and uh, I'll be right back. Nice little tack, hold everything into place, and then we'll weld it on up. Already got the back one done and the front. Smoking hot, but she's welded in and ready to go. We'll get the seat fit in here and see how she looks. All right, so getting ready to do the other side. I haven't fit everything yet. I ended up coating everything over there. I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit. Um, you will notice on this side, there are some brass welds. They are right here across the uh, bottom portion of where this bracket actually needs to set. So if you run into this on anything that you're doing, you will need to get rid of this brass. Uh, you cannot weld on top of that. Uh, this one should be okay because it's on the inside. I'll probably cut it down just a little bit, maybe a quarter inch back. Uh, but all I'm gonna do is just take a cutoff wheel, grind that down, and uh, make that so it's, it's good to go. So anyway, just a quick little thing that I found while I'm working on this, and you're gonna see this uh, in every car. All these older cars had a little bit of brass work that they did, um, and you don't necessarily need it all the time. So in this case, we definitely gotta get rid of it. Our MIG welds won't stick to that. So I will be right back with the rest of her. Well, got everything welded in. I'm gonna coat these floors up. Everything's all nice and square and snug where it needs to be. Got the driver's seat bolted down. Swing myself out. Everything works really nice. All mounted and where it's supposed to be. The only spot I don't have is the front bolt left in. And the seat needs to be twisted back just a smidge. Looks like it's sitting a little far forward, but what I ended up doing was pushing the seat forward when I mounted it so I could get to the back bolts, and I think that probably took the whole seat and twisted it just like this a little bit. But make sure when you weld these things in that you're welding the bolts in the center of the holes of the bracket. So um, when you do that, like this guy over here is just a little bit off, but he's not bolted down fully either. A little bit of movement. so. There's uh, some adjustments for everything in there. But I'll make a part two, um, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, what we need to do is we need to adjust these spots. And that's where your bolt hole is for your original bench seat seat belts. So what we need to do is move this sucker back um, just a few inches basically and get it to, uh, to bolt in so I have a new hole and a new spot for it. And then we'll coat the bottom side of the car everywhere that we welded and we should be good to go so hope you uh, were able to get something out of the video here and uh, hopefully it'll help you guys when you're doing your project any questions let me know thanks